Hi y'all. Due to some technical difficulties, we were not able to get all the way through the lesson on Thursday and Friday. So hopefully you'll be able to get through everything today. But if not, I I'm gonna go ahead and upload basically what our lesson is going to be. So I have employed my family to be my, my computer guy, my video gal, my model guy here. This is Aiden. Yeah, okay, get out of here. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and take it from the top. So first of all, if you went ahead into Google Classroom and you opened up the one that said Newton's Laws, no clips, you'll see something that looks like this. So you're gonna go ahead and click that, make sure that's open. If you've done this Friday, great. If you're not, well, here we go. Uh, go ahead and exit from here for a second. The second thing we're going to need today is your science journal. I've left a link to that again in today's to do's in science. And it's the one from Friday. If you were absent Friday, I, I have a special gift in there for the for you guys. If you were absent on Friday, you can click on Thursdays, and I've done a lot of the vocabulary for you. Free gift, shh, don't tell. All right, so um, the easiest way to do this, I think, is to kind of navigate back and forth. So we're gonna do a quick little summary lesson on how we can do that. So if you wanna bring the camera even closer, you can do that, or zoom, however you wanna do that, it's great. All right. So what you're going to do is you're going to open where it says Science Journal, you're going to go to the first screen, you're going to double click where it says your name and class period, and you're going to write down your name and class period. And you don't have to actually do that right now. The next slide is the table of contents. I've done that for you all the way through Forces in Motion. And we're not going to worry about all these other eight squares and stuff like that. We'll get to that as the year goes on. But we're going to go ahead and find the one that says Frere Model Blank. We're gonna go ahead and right click on that, or if you're a Chromebook, double click it. And you're gonna to go to where it says duplicate slide. So click duplicate slide, you're gonna grab that slide and bring it all the way down to the bottom of your slideshow. And you're gonna do that by holding it with your left click and just scrolling all the way down and dropping it. Once you get here, you're gonna double click where it says Frere Model, and you're gonna change that to Newton's Laws. N-E-W-T-O-N apostrophe S laws. Now there's 10 vocabulary words we're going to be doing, 10 terms that we're going to be looking at. So before you do anything else, you're going to go back to now where it says Newton's laws. You're going to right click on this screen and go to duplicate slide. And you're going to do that 10 times. So duplicate slide. That's three. One more. Four. Keep going. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine, ten. All right, now I'm going to scroll back up to that top one. And we're going to go ahead and plug in our vocabulary. Now, if you've already done this, fantastic. Most of you, I think, have at least put the word in and the vocabulary term. What our goal is today is I'm going to be demonstrating what these terms actually mean to give you the opportunity to fill in the other three squares. All right? So I'm going to show you, just for those of you who weren't here, how to kind of go back and forth and fill in just the vocabulary. So we're going to go ahead and click on the first one and let's look at force. So what you're going to do is go ahead and exit out of there for a second though. See, he's so quick. All right. We're just, I'm going to show you just how to set it up first. Go ahead and click on force and copy that. And you're gonna drop here, yep, and in that oval, you're going to paste it in. Or of course, you can just simply type force. And the upper left hand, oh, um, paste without formatting, or it gets really big. No worries, there you go. You're gonna paste without formatting. Okay, exit out of there. <laughs> erase that, click double click this, erase that. Okay, click here, copy that. Now click back here, click there. Now double click, paste without formatting. There you go, see the difference? All right, perfect. So up here, now some of you took notes by hand and you know what force means. Some of you can go back to Newton's Laws vocab and you're going to type a push or pull exerted on an object. So double, you have to double click it, copy, Go back to here, double click it, paste without formatting. Perfect. So you're going to go ahead and do that with the 10 vocabulary words, but don't move ahead because if you're not there yet, go ahead and stay with me because we're going to together work on filling up the other three squares. All right. So first of all, we're going to go ahead back to Newton's laws. 
and I want to show you push. So here we go. Let go to present now. Perfect. All right. Force. By scientific definition, a force is not just use the force, Luke, but it's a push or a pull. Where I'm going to go ahead and grab my my assistant. Here you go. How you doing? Good. Good. Uh, All right. Oh, okay. So a push, something that causes motion, or a pull. So a push or a pull, scientifically speaking, is a force. All right. Thank you, Aiden. Very good. Go away. All right. So what you're going to do now with a force, a push, or a pull? Why don't we go ahead and exit out of this again? That's just for my benefit. Go ahead and click there. Now, in your own words. You're going to take the definition, a push or a pull, in your own words, come up with the definition. So you can press pause right now and do that. Not you. <laughs> you, keep, you keep recording. But you at home can press pause and go ahead and do that. So let's just say a uh, push or pull. I'm going to say something that causes motion. So I'm going to type right there, something that causes motion. Now in the bottom box here, use it in a sentence. I used force to push my son or whatever. <laughs> Beautiful. And then this one right here, illustration or examples, this is where you guys get to be a little bit creative because you can write things like she pushed her kid and then pulled him, or you could say things like gravity, or you could do this. Right click here, or no, I'm sorry, go up to insert and go to image and go to search the web. So right here, I want you to write the word force. Good, go ahead. And we're gonna look through some of these things that kind of make you think of what I described as force. So we're gonna scroll through these because these are all Air Force. Wait, wait, go back up. One more, a little more. That kind of looks like force, but that looks too complicated. Never mind, keep going. Keep going, keep going. Find something. There's a lot of Air Force stuff there. There's a whole point. There's one. We're gonna go ahead and do that one because that's talking about the force of a car moving. So if you don't like that picture, if you wanna look at something else, you can go ahead and maybe narrow it down and say Newton's Law is force. But let's go ahead just for demonstration's sake and double click that. And it's gonna put a big picture somewhere. And you gotta shrink that down by grabbing a corner. Yep, moving it down, grab it, put it in that corner. Bam! Beautiful. Are you with me so far? Now I'll do that a couple of times so you don't get you know too too ahead of yourself. Let's go ahead back to Newton's laws here. Wait, wait, go, let's go. I'm a cycle it. Net force. Net force. There you go. Net force. All right. So net force is when you take all the forces working on an object and you put them together. What's the matter? Everything okay? Okay. So how you're gonna do that basically is, well, if two forces are working in the same direction, they're going to be added together. Look, let's say I'm driving along. My car just died. So I get out, now I'm looking at my car. It's a 2,000 pound, you know, car. Whoops, I said the pound word. But it's a two ton car, so here we go. I'm gonna put all my force and I'm gonna move this car. Hey! Okay, no, I can't even make this car budge. Hey, Aiden, come over here and push this car. Harder, harder! Oh, I think I got a hernia. Okay, Ooh. but come here. Now together, we're both going to push at the car. You ready? Right. Okay. Hey. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So what we did is we took our two forces and we added them together. The net force between the two of us was greater to overcome the inertia holding the car in place. Does that make sense? The net force moving in the same direction is added together. Now, come here for a second again, Aiden. Let's say you're gonna put your hands up here and I'm gonna push on you with, let's say, 40 Newtons. Newtons is how you measure force in science. Okay, we'll get more to that later. All right, so I'm gonna push on you with, say, 40 Newtons. That's not a whole lot, okay? Now here, you're gonna push against me with, let's say, go ahead, okay. I'm gonna push with you 40 Newtons. I'm moving him because he's not pushing at all, right? So the net force right now is 40 Newtons. But let's say he's pushing back a little bit. We're gonna both push on each other at say 40 Newtons. So the net force is zero, there's no motion because we're balanced, right? But now I'm gonna push at 60 Newtons. So 60 Newtons one way plus 40 Newtons the other way, you're gonna end up subtracting it. 
because the greater force is going to move that lesser force. Does that make sense? All right, and I'll show you more about that in a little while. All right, thank you, Amy. So net force, again, you're just going to copy net force. You're going to paste it in. We'll show one more time on this one. Yep. Copy. Beautiful. That one in the oval. We'll first write net force. Good job, remember, without formatting. And if you know how to do this, you can always pause for a second and do it yourself. Oh, case without formatting, undo. There you go, perfect. Now you're gonna do the definition in your own words. I'm not gonna take a whole lot of time to show you this again, but you're gonna put the definition in your own words. I don't know, a force that causes movement. And an illustration or example. Pushing a car together makes the car move. So we're gonna go ahead and do that one right here. So instead of pulling something from the internet, we're just gonna give an example right here. So go ahead and click here. And you're gonna say pushing together makes the car move. Does that make sense? You can put an illustration there. You can get a picture from the web. You can even draw it, take a picture of it, upload it, drop it in. That's a lot of work, but you guys, you know, you're more techie techie than I am. All right, perfect. Let's go ahead back to Newton's laws. Beautiful, and let's go ahead back to present. Okay, so we're gonna keep on going forward. Awesome. So unbalanced force is something that I showed you just a second ago. So the net force was both, the net, both of us moving together, we added together, but when we're unbalanced, an unbalanced force causes motion. An unbalanced force means one person is pushing more than the other person, or one person is pulling more than the other person. It's causing motion. Now, anything can cause that force though. Remember, it's a push or a pull. So a pencil on, on the side of a desk, if I move the desk like this and gravity takes over, and all of a sudden the pencil starts moving, that's an unbalanced force. It just caused motion to happen. Also, if something, let's say a baseball is coming to me really quickly and I hit it, I just unbalanced that force. I caused a change in motion. You with me? All right, so an unbalanced force causes a change in motion. All right, which brings us to a balanced force, and that's our next one. A balanced force is a force that doesn't cause change in motion. It's when equal forces are working on an object at the same time. I know, I just keep going, can, can I, hold on to me, lean back. I won't drop you, I promise. So if we're both leaning back with, let's say, 35 newtons or so, we're not moving. And if we're pushing each other with the same amount of force, we're not moving. Where this gets a little bit complicated though is when an object is already in motion. So let's say the moon. The moon is moving because of several things including gravity, centripetal force, etc. And the moon is moving at a constant rate. It's actually a balanced force. There's all of the forces working on the moon is balanced because it's not changing its rate of rotation. Does that make sense? It's staying the same. Now if a huge comet came and hit it, well that'd be a different story. But as it is, it's a balanced force, even though it's in motion. All right, so we're gonna go ahead. Now, one of the greatest forces, the second strongest force in the cosmos after atomic force is gravity. Everything has gravity. Now we know gravity as the force that pulls us and, and, and makes us stick to the ground, right? Gravity, a couple quick things, fun things about gravity is if you're flying through a plane and you jump out of the plane, you're gonna be pulled, of course, to Earth, right? At a rate of 9.8 meters per second per second. And if I jumped out of a plane, and I had a penny in my hand at the same time, and I dropped that penny, what do you think would happen? What do you think? Go ahead, just say from there. I think that if you were in a vacuum, you'd hit the ground at the same time. Exactly, if you take air resistance out of the equation, we actually fall at the exact same rate of speed, 9.8 meters per second per second. We're going to accelerate faster and faster and faster until we reach terminal velocity, which we'll talk about more later. But anyway, the force of gravity is what pulls us down. But what's interesting and what we don't think about is that everything has gravity. Everything in the cosmos has gravity. I have gravity, you have gravity. Even a little dust mode has gravity. And I can prove it to you. 
The next time you're in, even you can kind of see a little bit right here with the screen light, but if you are in a room where there's a really bright light and there's little like dust motes floating around, you can kind of see. If you go really, really gently, very, very slowly, and put your arm in that beam of light and hold it still, you'll see within a few minutes, those motes of dust will start circling your arm and sticking to you because you actually have a gravitational pull. Everything that has mass has gravity. That's crazy. We are literally physically attracted to everything around us. And the reason why I don't go slamming into the nearest building is because the earth is the most massive thing around. It has so much mass that I'm stuck in place. Now, do things have more mass than the Earth? You bet. For instance, the Sun. The Sun is way more massive than the Earth. You can fit a million Earths into the Sun. So why don't we all go careening into the Sun? It's because it's too far away. So gravity depends on two things. It depends on the mass of an object and how far away it is. So if you want to pause right now, again, you can pause, you can type what gravity is in your own words. You can put a picture in right there. You can use it in a sentence and then you can move on. So if you want to pause, pause now. Okay, let's keep going. All right. So friction. Friction is the force that opposes motion. Now we all know friction as things rubbing against each other, right? But this is kind of cool. If you put your hands together, go like this. You're gonna build some heat. It's really easy to rub our hands together, right? But what if you push really hard? If you push really hard against each other, it's a lot harder to move, right? The more pressure between two surfaces, the greater the friction. The more the friction, the harder it's going to be to, to move. We can increase the friction on things by increasing the weight or increasing how textured something is. Let me tell you a story. My oldest son, Nick, he went away to college a few years ago. He had this truck and he was driving in the middle of the snow and because he was out in you know Arizona and it was beautiful in the mountains and everything. And he stopped and they were looking around. He was there with his buddies and they were he, they get back to get into the truck and they go to start and the wheels just spun. And the truck wasn't moving. There was no friction between the tires and the snow it had gotten really slushy and then it froze into ice. So as his tires are spinning, zzz, 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 and all of his buddies are trying to like push and rock the truck out and zzz, it wasn't going anywhere. And it was starting to get dark and they're in the middle of the woods and no one knows they're there. And my son, Nick, he said, you know, we need to increase the friction. We need to get the tire something to grab on. So they went and, and, and grabbed the, the, uh, what is it called? The things that are, that you put your feet on the, on the baseboards of a car. The carpets. Yeah, it's the carpets, it's the car carpets. It's the the little, little carpets, the mats. Yeah, in the, in the truck. So they take those out and they wedge them underneath because he's trying to decrease motion of the tire on the ice. So he's trying to increase friction. So he wedges it under there and he, zzzz, nothing. Still, he just shot the rugs right out from the truck. Now what do they got to do? What could they do? How could they increase friction? Somebody had the bright idea to start putting snow in the bed of the truck to increase the weight of the truck. And they did. And they piled snow and they piled snow and they piled snow and it's getting darker and darker and it's colder and colder and they're afraid they're going to die in the middle of the woods. And they put the rugs underneath and they pile more snow and they get in and they cross their fingers and and all of a sudden it was able to grab and it increased the friction because it increased the weight between the truck and the ice and was able to grab, increasing that friction and was able to actually get purchase and drive. Science, man, if you don't know science, he could have died out there in the middle of the woods and never know what happened to him. But friction is the force that opposes gravity, or excuse me, that opposes motion. So if I'm standing right here in my wood floor and I'm going like this and I'm not moving, that's fine. But if I'm on ice, I'm going to be a lot more slick because there's a lot less friction. All right. So now I'm going to bust down just the basic three laws. First of all, the law of the first law, Newton's first law of motion is also called the law of inertia. Inertia is one of your vocabulary words that comes next, but I want you to go ahead and write this down. 
An object at rest tends to stay at rest. An object in motion stays in motion in a straight line until a force acts upon it. Now you should have this to refer back to as well. But you're going to put this whole piece right here as your vocabulary word. Your whole piece right there. Now this is the Newton's law that everybody tends to know when they think of Newton's law. An object in motion stays in motion, an object at rest stays at rest. But what does that mean? It means that if I sit here, if I'm just going to lean right here, I will be just like this forever until a force acts upon me. An internal force, me choosing to move, or an external force, force something pushing me. I will stay in that place forever. An object at rest stays at rest. As a matter of fact, think about this. The footsteps on the moon of the people who walked across the moon and left footprints, there's no wind, there's nothing messing it up, and the way that dirt is now is exactly the same as it was decades ago. It hasn't moved because there's no force there to move it. An object at rest is staying perfectly at rest forever. And an object in motion will stay in motion forever until something acts upon it. Now here, if I throw a baseball, that baseball eventually is going to go bonk, right, and hit the earth because of gravity. But if I'm in deep space where there's no air resistance and there's no gravity and I hit a baseball, it will never stop. Ever. That's mind boggling when you think about it. An object in motion will stay in motion forever until a force acts upon it. So everything in the world can be explained by Newton's laws. This one is kind of the most obvious, right? If I'm gonna be driving, I'm gonna keep on driving until I hit something or some force acts upon me. The word inertia, one more, perfect is a tendency of a moving object to continue in that straight line or an object at rest to stay at rest. The word inertia just is the tendency of an object to keep doing what it's doing. If I were to write that in my own words, I would say it would keep doing what it's doing. And again, remember at any time you can, okay, you can pause it and, and fill in those other three uh, boxes, all right? So Newton's second law, we're almost done, we only got two more. Newton's second law says, it's also called the mathematical law. This one gets a little bit tricky to explain, but it says that force equals mass times acceleration. All right, it's written this way, and in your three boxes in that lower left-hand one that says an example, I would simply write F equals M times A. I mean, you write whatever you want, but that's the force that, that's what, uh, that's the equation we're gonna be looking at. And this is when it comes to this. If you had to be hit by a bowling ball or by any piece of metal this big, which one would you choose? And most people say the itty bitty little piece of metal, right? Because the mass of that itty bitty, tiny itty bitty piece of metal might be a couple little grams where a bowling ball is going to be like 10 kilograms. It's going to have a lot more force, right? Well, if I dropped it, okay, Aiden, lay right here. I'm going to drop, not really. I'm going to drop something on you, a tiny piece of metal or a great big bowling ball. You have to choose which one. It's probably going to choose a little piece of metal, right? But what if I said that massive bowling ball is moving really, really slowly and barely bumps into your foot? But that itty bitty teeny piece of metal this big, I just loaded into a BB gun and shot you with it. Now which one would you rather get hit by? Probably the slow moving bowling ball, right? The force an object has is when you take the mass, how much stuff it's made of, multiplied by how fast it's going, the acceleration. Does that make sense? So that's Newton's second law. And we can play a lot about with this to say, well, if I know the force and I know the mass, how do you solve for acceleration? And it gets really mathy and it's a lot of fun. We'll do that sometime soon, but not today. All right, finally, Newton's third law is also called the law of the equal and opposite law. It's the one that, again, what goes up must come down. Whatever I hit, it's gonna hit me back. And we started that on, on Thursday when I said, for your warm up, for your bell ringer, to hit a table. Hit it harder. Hit it harder. Hurts, doesn't it? 
because as hard as you hit that table, that table hit you back. So how does that come into play? Well, let's look at that car, the one that was stuck or maybe the one that broke down. Let's look at that car. Let's say I'm driving that car and I'm driving 30 miles an hour. See, I'm using all that not metric stuff, but we'll just for fun. 30 miles an hour and I hit a wall. Ouch, that's got to bust up my fender, right? Bust up my bumper and maybe hurt the wall a little bit. Because when I hit that wall, that wall hit me back. If I'm moving this way at 30 miles an hour and I hit a car coming this way with 30 miles an hour, and we hit head on, it'll have the same force as if I, my car hit a brick wall going 60 miles an hour. Does that make sense? 30 miles an hour, 30 miles an hour, a head on collision has a net force of 60. You get it? All right, cool. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna give you time, I'm gonna stop talking, I'm going to shut up so I'm no longer the talking head in the corner, and I'm gonna give you an opportunity to finish those three squares for each one of your vocabularies. I would like those vocabularies done today, which is Tuesday. Well, by the time you see this anyway, it'll be Tuesday. So I'd like those vocabularies done today. If you have any questions, I'll be available on Zoom all day, of course, from 2.30 to 3.30 for any one-on-one -on -one tutoring. If you need to, drop me a remind or an email, and I hope to see you soon. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Thanks, guys.